it's like a wood it's pretty nice it's like a little like single room wood one yeah yeah it's nice sweet mm-hmm. yeah so we're we're recording okay we don't have to be live or anything though okay. it's not it's, it's recorded <laughs> like we can edit this okay so okay. anything you say all right that you want to take back <laughs> we can edit yeah whatever okay is this your first podcast um like in general yeah ever i don't know Maybe. I feel like I've done interviews, but maybe not a podcast. Yeah. I feel like um, that's one thing, like the college sports. Mm-hmm. Like Florida State should have a, their own sports yeah, podcast. That would Pepperdine be cool. should have their own. It's yeah. such a, like, it's pretty much free. Mm-hmm. Like the mixer was like 300 bucks. The mics were 300 bucks each. The stands were like 100 bucks. So you could probably, and it's like, I don't know, $1,200. Yeah, and then that's you're not done. bad. Yeah. yeah, it's just a one-time. It's just, yeah, there's no recurring yeah. cost to it. Yeah. So I don't know why more sports, more colleges don't have them. Yeah, I think Pepperdine has like a wave cast, and they interview okay. a couple people, I okay. think. But I know, that would be so cool to hear from like other athletes yeah. and stuff. And I don't even know if FS, they, FSU probably does, but I just had a little glimpse of time there, yeah. so I don't really... Did you, oh, did FSU feel more like home? Cause you're like, when it's, I think of you, I think yeah, of Florida, even yeah. though I've known mm-hmm. you at Pepperdine mm-hmm. for the most of the time that we've known each other, mm-hmm. but I feel like you're such a Florida person. Yeah, <laughs> I am for sure. It was, it was different. Like it was kind of home mm-hmm. cause it's like an eight hour drive basically to Tallahassee yeah. from where I live in Fort Lauderdale. Um, so that was different. And then just the lifestyle is like very different than yeah. South Florida. So it kind of felt like a different place altogether. Like it didn't really feel like the Florida I know. Yeah. Like Tallahassee is a little different. Yeah, like there's no palm trees. There's no beach. Like <laughs> yeah. there's like, it's Florida. It's Northern Florida for yeah. sure. But it was kind of cool because I got kind of got the seasons and yeah. things I didn't get in both places. So that was kind of cool. Tallahassee's East Coast? It's, Time zone? yeah, it's East, it's right East Coast. The and then it's cut, like right? in, on the like bend around the corner yeah. of the Florida. Like, but like. T- the time zone, like Tallahassee is pretty oh, much the last yeah, stop on the East Coast. Because yeah. I remember mm-hmm. when I moved to Fort Walton and I drove, oh, yeah, I just you... drove south to Jacksonville uh-huh. and then uh, west from there. And I think Tallahassee, like you hit it and then your clock goes back one hour. Yeah, because Panama, if you go to Panama City, then it changes. Mm-hmm. So it's like pretty close to the time change. It's like yeah. the last. Where is Fort Walton, you said? Yeah. Where is that? It's uh, like northwest florida it's okay. fort walton so it's, like, it's like uh fort walton pensacola mm-hmm. and that's the last okay of florida how is fort walton beautiful yeah it's I've never been there one of the most beautiful places i've ever seen wow it's got that like sugar white sand oh that's the and best. the teal caribbean water yeah. if you were to show me a picture of it mm-hmm. i would think it's somewhere like a caribbean yeah island. yeah but it's just like redneck I Florida. Love that. Oh my God. <laughs> I know it's just crazy how how Florida is so different. Like throughout, it's kind of fun. There's so, you on your toes. <laughs> it's like four different states. Yeah, it really in one. is. Florida mm-hmm. and California, I think, both have that. Because mm-hmm. Florida, yeah. like Miami, yeah, Miami's is like Upper Cuba. It's a yeah. totally different mm-hmm. country. Mm-hmm. And then you get into like Fort Lauderdale, which is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And you were, like, Deerfield was your kind of home beach, though, right? Fort Lauderdale is, Fort like, Lauderdale. where I'm from originally, yeah. Okay. But I, I played at Deerfield a lot. Okay. I still do. I've yeah. heard Deerfield mm-hmm. is awesome. It's, it's an awesome. amazing beach. Yeah. Never been. Need to go. It's a good, like, volleyball hub. There's a lot yeah. of players that play there. Not a ton of people come out to Fort Lauderdale Beach. Yeah. But um, what else? Like, Del Rey is super awesome. Just yeah. the downtown and the beach. It's very laid back. I like Del Rey for that yeah. reason. But, yeah. The funny almost. part about Florida it's like none of the beaches are really playable. You go yeah. to St. Pete's and it's <laughs> no, especially all like, the West Coast. it's just like sprinkling sand on hardwood. Yeah, like, especially the not... West Coast. Like at least <laughs> yeah. like Fort Lauderdale, you can dive. The sand's kind of like grainy. Yeah. But I can dive. It's like a nice medium. Like it's kind of hard packed, but also yeah. like kind of deep to where you can dive, but still like hit pretty yeah. hard. I enjoyed playing there last year. Yeah. And it's, uh, like you said, it's the sand sort of, goes like it falls away yeah when mm-hmm. you step it's not like super deep but the way your foot goes into yeah. the sand you don't like makes it seem deep. yeah 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 so yeah that one's not bad and then like delray like deerfield kind of similar yeah but the west coast is legit like i didn't play over there for a while because i was scared of getting hurt like it's <laughs> siesta key yes. if it rains and you're playing a siesta key tournament you like, can't it's indoor call it might as well get knee pads <laughs> yeah. it's crazy so you played indoor at aquinas Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You miss it at all? 
I do. It feels like a different life. Like that yeah. feels like so long ago, but it was so fun. Like we had a really great team and my coach, Lisa Zelinsky was super cool. And yeah. she was just like one of my first like big role models. So that was awesome. And it's just like a really big sports school. Yeah. So it was, it was a lot of fun, but who were, did you have some big name football players when you were there? <sighs> yeah. The Bosa's. Okay. And they also, I'm pretty sure we live like relatively, they're from Fort Lauderdale too. So okay. they're around there. Both of them were there. Okay. Um, I think Joey's a little bit older than me, but Nick was like around two or three years older than me. Okay. So he was there. And like Nick Saban definitely flew a helicopter and landed on our field <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> so that was always entertaining. Yeah. We're like, oh, there is a helicopter. Nick Saban's here. <laughs> Pick up some recruits. So it was uh, football's so different down there. It's crazy. Oh yeah, gosh. it's crazy. I mean, it, it's cool. Like it was. I feel like that almost fired up like the other sports too. Yeah. And it was like it was a fun environment. Well, because when so. you have a good football team, you become a sports school. Yeah, it's like everything yeah. follows football. If you have a bad football team, but like your field hockey team is good, no one mm -hmm. really cares. But if your <laughs> yeah, football team's so good, true. it just it carries the school spirit. That's so true. <laughs> it really is true. Yeah, it was fun. I, I really liked St. Thomas. It was yeah. cool. Yeah. And you, are you out here now? Did you move here? Yeah, like, I kinda, think so. Sorta, for the yeah. summer, maybe? Yeah, for the summer. And then I think I'm, I'm deciding about after that, kind of yeah. seeing how it goes. But I mean, I love it out here. So yeah, yeah. it's man. It's so funny. I've been very spoiled now because I've mm -hmm. lived here. I moved here in September of 2015. Mm -hmm. And now like I've been caught up in like this weather's terrible. It's gray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's windy. It's kind of cold. It's June. Mm -hmm. Like we're supposed to have sun now. Yeah, I forgot about that like, actually. <laughs> yeah. Like I came back and I was like, oh, oh yeah. Now I remember summer schools at Pep when it was like gray outside yeah. this time of year. But yeah, we have to we have to accept that so that we can get to summer <laughs> exactly and enjoy the blue. But yeah, no. So where where'd you move? Like are you? In the South Bay, or are you like kind of torn? Kind of. I'm in Carson in okay. like a temporary housing thing with Katie. Okay. Um, we live with someone else. It's a pretty good spot. It's a good location. So, yeah, we have that through like August, and then we're just going to kind of okay. see. That's perfect. Yeah. Just play Manhattan and then see yeah. how it feels from there. And the exactly. random, now the random Chicago qualifiers. Yeah, I know. The secret <laughs> quality. I found out about that, luckily. That's like a Norseka qualifier. Yeah, <laughs> no I know. I never know when those are happening, so it's good. <laughs> just like pops up on a random Thursday. You yeah. walk down the beach, it's like, why Seems are all like the best players in the country playing right now? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a tournament I should know about. Yeah. Yeah. Did you play the World Champs Norseka quality? No, I didn't. I think it was like right before where like we didn't want to play too much right before. Was it before Huntington? It was like one day before Huntington. Yes. Or something. Okay. Yeah. I think we were like kind of resting because we had just gotten back from helping with FSU and we hadn't practiced much. So we yeah. were like, okay, let's ease into this. Yeah. But no, I heard about it kind of last minute and I was like, dang, that'd be cool. Yeah. Well, it was just so crazy because my parents were in town mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, we want to watch good volleyball. I said, well, you can watch a Navy, like a Navy PE. Yeah right down the street in Manhattan. Yeah. So we just walked down and my dad was like, why aren't there more people here? Yeah, like, it's no so low knows. key. Secret. <laughs> that's cool. I got to watch them. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how's life been as a professional beach volleyball player? Because I don't know if you had any expectations mm -hmm. or images of what you thought it might be. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what the, what the reality yeah. is and how that's been treating you. Yeah. Well... I kind of, so I graduated last July, mm -hmm. so it was like midsummer. I was kind of playing with Katie, like started to play with her throughout that time. But up and through that, I was like in school still, and it was kind of like, we played in our first tournament like five days after Gulf Shores. So I don't okay. even think I really had time to like <laughs> yeah. process what was going on. I was like, okay, like let's keep going. Yeah. Um, and I think I, in retrospect, I probably should have taken a break. Like I was like, <laughs> by the middle of the season, I was like, all right, I feel this. Yeah. But I actually had like an interesting kind of like path. So I played with Katie last summer. Mm -hmm. And then but when I was like in the MBA program at FSU, I'm a very like all in type of person. So I was like getting really just involved with my opportunities in the MBA program. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of great like networking event events. Um, and I didn't really know. <laughs> I still don't, but like what my plan was in a way, but I was like, I'm going to exploit all these like really cool opportunities. Let me yeah. go to these job fairs. Like, let me do all these things. Um, and then I kind of used like my fifth year at FSU to gauge like, okay, 
do I really want to go do I really want to like play volleyball after college like because I did have a little bit of a time where I wasn't sure about that um and FSU definitely like was awesome like Brooke and Nick were super cool and I was excited about it and I was like okay like I know I want to play um then I was also like getting in like seeing what my opportunities were like through the MBA program Mm -hmm. and so I ended up I think it was like in the fall of my MBA program so before like season even happened with the team lining up um a full-time job for after graduation so it was going to be starting like in the following September um with a consulting firm okay and I thought that would be a good decision to play and do that I don't know why (laughs) but (laughs) yeah so I was like okay like that was nice because I had something lined up already I could place I could go into season like not worry about that um and so I think um that's just kind of like where I was at, like mm-hmm. in season. I was like, okay, like I, I love playing. I want to play, but like I'll kind of navigate this path too. Yeah. Um, and so we finished up kind of in August and then my job was starting like around September, like early September. Um, and I kind of was just, I kind of just went for it in that regard. Um, but I didn't fully like think through, I guess I, I wouldn't have known this without doing it. Yeah. Um, just one of those things like yeah, you kind of have to do, but it just didn't really work. Um, I tried playing and working and, um, like in this job specifically, it was just like not for me. Yeah. So that made it, um, cause I'm very, I, I knew on the first day I wasn't going to like it necessarily. <laughs> That's um, tough. That's <laughs> tough when you know on day Well, long. it was hard cause like they also recruited me for a certain branch of like the firm that they didn't end up putting me in. So mm-hmm. I was in like auditing, which isn't something I felt trained for slash like I would have learned it, but didn't enjoy it. Right. Um, so it was kind of like the first day I was just like, Oh, this is like new. Like, let me just be all in, like learn right. it. But very, very quickly, I was just not happy. Um, <laughs> yeah. then I was missing like FIVBs and like a couple big tournaments. Yeah. Um, and so that was, like, really just hard for me. Like, I had kind of a couple, like, realization moments where I was just like, hmm, like, what am I doing? This doesn't seem right. This doesn't yeah. feel right. It doesn't sit right. Um, and I know, like, your job or, like, your occupation isn't always going to be, like, sunshine and rainbows. But right. I was not, like, finding any sort of, like, fulfillment or at least, like, desire to like level up in the organization or like any sort of cue Mm -hmm. that I would normally look for. Um, and also a creative person, like it just didn't really fit like me. Um, and not only that, but it was holding me back. So it was just a little bit hard. I was waking up at 4am to try to lift and condition, had meetings at like seven that would run late sometimes like into the night and then trying to practice at like 7 p.m., which some people can do. Yeah. Um, and they love it. And that's, I think, because they kind of find some like satisfaction or enjoyment in their work. But it was just like that part was totally missing. There's a long days, too. It's a long. Yeah, it really adds up. And I just wasn't sure if like for my personality that could work for me. Mm-hmm. If I like if I really wanted to like go for it in beach and like see like where that can take me, I didn't think that that lifestyle for my personality, like I said, could necessarily get me there. Um, so I've never really quit anything in life so far, but I'm, I'm happy I did in retrospect, but it was hard for me. Like I did it for about three and a half months. Um, and I liked the people. Um, but I just, I felt just like kind of lost and I knew I wanted to like level up in other senses, like in volleyball. Mm-hmm. And so I ended up quitting around like mid and like right before Huntington, the Huntington tour stop. Okay. And I had like a week before the Huntington tour stop where I had like quit my job and I was like coming off of just like a whirlwind of emotions. Um, and then I like met up with Katie, like she came, flew into South Florida. Like she had just got, got back from Dubai, which was like super sick. She That's did right. so well she did. with Julia. Um, and I was just so excited to play. Like I was like, I had this like new, just like wanting to like get after it feeling that mm-hmm. like I was relieved because I had like taken the step of like 
saying like, oh, that's not for me, which is something like very uncomfortable. Um, but then like to be able like to get the chance to play like the following week was like super exciting. And then I, it was like super, the tournament was so fun. You like we out. just, yeah, it was <laughs> cool. So it was just kind of funny how life like works like that. I mean, I had to do something like really, really hard um, in order to like, just like find like this ne next level of like joy and like excitement because that was pretty much like where I was deciding like, okay, like, no, like I want to like, I want more of mm -hmm. this lifestyle. And so very different like things I was trying very. to do, but I think I needed to do that yeah. to like find out like, okay, well like where's like my passion, where's mm -hmm. my passion like really lie. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like how I started. And then that was kind of like last year. Um, and then I, in the Tavares ABP, I started talking to like Brooke a little bit, like mm -hmm. catching up because she was there with Nick um, and kind of filling her in. She was like, oh, okay, like you finally quit the job that I told you not to do. <laughs> Yay. Now we can move on. You can Spoken play professional like beach coach. volleyball. <laughs> no, she told me like the second I like, she was like, uh, when I was at school, she was like, okay, like Brooke, what are your plans? Like, you really got to play like me and Nick like really like want you to play yeah I was like I want to play too I just I think I'm gonna also try to do this job and she was like okay Brooke <laughs> we'll see how like get, let's see how long it lasts okay mm -hmm. like but no she was supportive and like she wanted me to go and do it and like see if I really liked it um but she was like she was funny like when I yeah. was talking to her like in December she was like all right I'm ready for it like let's go bro <laughs> But it was funny because we reconnected and then um, like a couple weeks later, she was like, Brooke, like, I know you're playing with Katie and like Katie's going to be up here and you're probably going to want to train um, and you have like a lot of flexibility now. Um, but Elena's going to New Zealand for a month. Like, would you want to fill in as the volunteer? Elena Chacon. And Yeah, Elena was, she's the volunteer coach at okay. FSU, but she had this like amazing trip planned in advance to go out um, and play the New Zealand tour with Jason out there. I'd probably do that instead of volunteering. Right. <laughs> um, so I was like, um, yeah, I'll fill in. That sounds awesome. Because um, coaching is kind of something I also had, like, an, I've had just, like, interest uh -huh. in. A um, little nerve-wracking, like, going back and coaching the team I had just played for, like, mm -hmm. the pre previous year. Um, but it was, like, so cool. And so I got to do that um, this past kind of spring, I guess it was. And um, work with like a lot of the girls I played with, yeah. so that was pretty cool. And how was that? Katie, so. How was that dynamic? Because Delaney did that. Yeah, I remember. And she, she loved it. Yeah. And her thing was that she felt that she could finally leave Pepperdine when everyone she played with was gone, because mm -hmm. there was a different connection with the people you played with. Yeah. And then she just and she was also having a baby, so mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. There was that. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I really liked it. I feel like. I'm, like, a really big, like, relationships person, and so, mm -hmm. like, I got to build these amazing relationships at FSU, but it was only one year, so it was kind of, like, a weird thing where I was, like, oh, I already have to leave, like, you know, it's just kind of, like, a weird thing, so when I got the chance to, like, come back and continue to be around, like, these amazing people who, like, had a huge effect on my life, yeah, um, I was super excited about it, and it was really cool, because um, I feel like... I just knew things about some of the players and like how they preferred to be talked to and like our, just our relationship Yeah, um, that helped like me and like learning how to coach them like mm -hmm. in the games. And so that was really cool. Just like watching them succeed as like a teammate and then as like a coach trying to help them succeed yeah. was like really cool. So you were the volunteer this spring? I was for like the first half of season, like okay. or maybe a little bit less, like okay. the first couple of tournaments. Because they had another – Florida State's always knocking on the door. Yeah. They're due. They're, <laughs> you're going to win one, Brooke. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. I mean, Brooke is awesome. Brooke and Nick, they're just a uh, really good combo. They balance each other out really well, and they run, like, a really high-level program. So yeah. I wasn't – I mean, I wasn't surprised that they took this group of youngsters and yeah. knocked at the door once again. It was yeah. pretty cool to be a part of that. It was it's really cool, cool to see all the players who have come out of Florida State mm -hmm. – do really well. I mean, Katie Horton being yeah. one of them. Maddie Anderson. Yeah, Maddie's already one. beast. I think Valena yeah. wants to get after it. She'd mm -hmm. be really good. Molly McBain just got picked up by Pavin. Mm -hmm. I know. Which is I'm a pretty good scoop. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really cool. Just the culture of excellence and um, just like the desire and like 
that you get or not desire but just like motivation that you get from like being coached by such high level yeah. players is really cool and um they they want us to play you know they want us to keep playing especially if they see it so just like knowing that they have that confidence in you too is mm-hmm. like pretty cool so and you i mean you've been coached by some really awesome coaches highly qualified coaches yeah i mean just <laughs> i'm so grateful it's just to like think back like i said all the way to like lisa zelinski um steve grutowski uh, i trained with him like in high school awesome i've um, still never met steven really person. yeah oh you guys are, just never you guys are, cross paths yeah he's he's like the chillest person that i know that's what i hear <laughs> <laughs> but no he's he's really cool and i feel like i've had a lot of different like personality i've worked with a lot of different personalities like in coaches which has benefited me 100 percent um because then i had nina and marcio mm-hmm. brooke nick like i mean i'm just so grateful for like all the coaches that have pushed me yeah. and like helped me to like learn and grow on and off the court like it's been it's been so cool. I wouldn't change like anything about yeah. college. It was awesome. What was uh What was your recruiting process like? Because you were very good outside at Aquinas, outside, right? Yeah, outside. Mm-hmm. And uh, but you were also, I'm sure you probably had offers to go indoor and beach. Would be my guess. Yeah, I actually Pepperdine wanted me to play both. Okay. Um, and but... Nina recruited you, right? Nina recruited me, and then Scott like started trying to recruit me like a little bit after Scott. that. Scott, um. I can't remember his last name, but what school? Pepperdine. He's like oh, the, Pepperdine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm drawing a blank, but he's, oh, Scott Wong. Scott Wong. Okay. <laughs> Scott Wong, obviously. <laughs> um, he at the he would he was coming out to beach tournaments too, and like okay. and like recruiting, and um, he was he wanted me to play indoor too, okay. which would have been awesome. Um, but I just kind of like always liked beach like a little bit more, mm-hmm. and I didn't want it to like take away from that in any way, because you know like when you have two seasons. Um, a lot of times you have to like, it's a lot. Yeah. Dedicate in different ways. (laughs) And I care about school. I did. Pepperdine was hard. Yeah. Yeah, The business school is a little bit challenging, but yeah. So I guess, yeah, I kind of like, I knew a little bit early on that I wanted to play beach. Um, my parents met playing beach volleyball. It's been in my family for like a while, but they put, we played like every sport growing up. Were your parents Florida people too? They weren't one of my mom's from Ohio and my dad's from okay. Wisconsin, but okay. they both, my mom went to university of Miami and played basketball there. Oh, so that's why right she on. came down. And then my dad, I think he just wanted to have a boat and live in Florida <laughs> after being up in the cold. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he's um, a fence contractor. And so he, he came down and they met playing. So that was yeah. like, just always been like kind of a cool thing so in our course, family. Ohio and Wisconsin met playing beach volleyball. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The, the connector. <laughs> yeah. But so, I mean, I played all like a lot of sports growing up, especially like basketball, too, because my mom played and stuff. But um, there's just something about like beach that I always kind of like felt like it was home. Yeah. Um, And I think I mean, I love like nature and being outside. And so like the ability to be like competing and playing and look out at the ocean and like reset for Uh me is like just so cool like I just don't there's like not many like sports like scenarios that you can like emulate um that situation but anyways so I played two years of club volleyball I think it was with tribe um in South Florida and then I quit and uh, after I committed to Pepperdine for beach volleyball I quit and then I just played beach like the last two years of high school but I played all four years at Aquinas because it was so fun yeah (laughs) so I definitely I like both um and I miss indoor I miss being able to jump yeah. like a foot higher yeah. <laughs> i do miss that yeah. but yeah no i beaches beaches my heart so. was it was it hard for you to leave i mean going from fort lauderdale to pepperdine it's not a easy commute yeah <laughs> it was it was hard i think just like coming out here in the summers like junior when i was like in juniors kind of like I don't know. There's just something about California that I like loved. I think yeah. it's the mountains a little bit, to be honest with you. I love that. Um, no one ever says that. I, but the really, Sierras are so special. That's, that's surprising. Yeah. No, I, I think, I don't know if it's like because of Florida. Like, I love Florida. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But it's like there is no sort of like flat. hiking. <laughs> there, unless you want to go to the Everglades yeah. and like catch an alligator. I don't know. <laughs> go on a motorboat ride or something. Yeah. Um, that just was like the, the mountains are like mesmerizing to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and Easton, my boyfriend's from Simi Valley. So he okay. like 
I mean, he grew up like camping and stuff and like we both just like love California. Yeah. But I think just like that and like the volleyball, like when I was like younger was like amazing out yeah. here. Um, aside from like FSU was awesome too. Um, and I visited there, but I was just, and then Pepperdine um, was pretty much like the perfect combo of all those things, like yeah. nestled in the mountains, like amazing school. Mm-hmm. Like they were like the best speech school. Um, and Nina was like Nina and Marcio combo was legendary. So that was like my like dream yeah. school, to be honest with you. And for that to happen was like super yeah. sick. So, yeah. When I stepped foot on that campus for the first time, I was like, you got to be kidding me. It's fake. I mean, it's it is like the prettiest place I've ever seen. It's so pretty. I mean, yeah. The fact that you can be up in the mountains and then look over and see the Pacific Ocean. is The library is insane. Oh, yeah. The library is so cool. Yeah. They just redid it, too. Because when I used sure. to go up, when 1440 was streaming Pepperdine matches, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I, I would then that. go into the library to finish up writing or whatever I needed to do. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I would take my time. Yeah. Oh, I was in the library all the time. All yeah. the time. That view is the only reason I'd ever be in a library. Yeah. It's so cool. It's like that from the cafeteria, too, which I only... I guess I only was in the cafeteria like freshman and sophomore year, but it's it's so it's really pretty. Yeah. You can see the ocean and stuff. Like that's yeah. the only recruiting pitch you need. Yeah. Like, hi, I'm Marcia Sicoli. Come see this view. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much all you need to do. Yeah. And then pull out their resumes. You know? yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you're pretty cool. Did did you and Delaney play together at all? We didn't. No, I missed her by like a year. Oh, bummer. I know. I I mean Delaney was like always my idol though. <laughs> like whenever I'd watch Pepper I've told her this too. But whenever I would watch Pepperdine, like Delaney was like my idol. Like yeah. and I didn't even know that I was gonna play defense. Like because Delaney, did she play defense all? Like she split a little she, bit too, right? I think split a little. Maybe split with Maddie Rowe. Uh, didn't she? Didn't she, she play defense? She might have full time D with her. I think she did. I mean, I kind of stalked her, so I think she did. <laughs> um, no, but I didn't know I was gonna play like full time defense yeah. all four years at Pep, and then, like especially when I was like coming into that role, like. I mean, Delaney was just, like, someone I really looked up to. And then we just, like, had a great relationship at Pepperdine, too, um, since she was the coach. She ended up being one of the coaches, which was, yeah. like, awesome. Um, but, yeah, no, it was uh, it was really cool. Like, just, like, looking up to her and then, like, being like, dang, like, we missed, like, each other by, like, a year. But then she was, like, back on the staff. So that yeah. was kind of cool. Yeah, she adored coaching you as well. Oh, <laughs> she's the best. But Pep's produced some pretty good professional players, too. Oh, yeah. Kelly Kalinske. Yeah. I think if Summer Ross would have stayed, Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's Washington or Pepperdine. I don't know who gets to claim Summer. I remember her as Pepperdine. Pepperdine. Oh, yeah. She might have been indoor at Washington. Was she? And then Beach. Yeah, I think so. Beach at Pep. Yeah, I think she was. And we'll give Pep credit for Summer. Yeah, Pep can take it. But Deanna's having a great year. Yeah, Deanna's awesome. Great couple years, really. Mm -hmm. It's fun to see the the college mafia, as I Mm -hmm. like to call you guys. I know. It's like, okay, whole new squad coming out. Well, just, I mean, you almost got burned by it in Huntington. You get like Alexi Denneberg with zero points. Yeah. Like Q30. I'm like, that is not a 30 seed. Yeah, no. (laughs) It's a great, it's a really great team. I kind of you, didn't think much about that game going out. I was like, this you, is going to be a battle. If you played court one in college, I think you mm-hmm. should come on to the AVP with a minimum of 2,000 points. That would I, be nice. I think that would, should be the rule. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a grind, but I get it. Like, everyone has to go through it. So yeah. it's just, like, how it works. There's but. just so many good women. Yeah, there is. It's so stacked. Like, yeah. that Huntington quality was, like, shocking Holy to me. Cow. Like, that could have been an AVP. Like, you just took was... a fifth in Miami. Yeah. And then you were, like, the third seed in the qualifier. I was like. It was dang, yeah. it's really, and it's you cool to the see. Team that like, took what, fifth? Molly and Yeah, Maddie Molly and Maddie took fifth. They're grooving. They're like the 15th. Mm-hmm. They're grooving. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah. It is nuts. It's it's really cool to see, though. Like, yeah. it's like the sports are like really growing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just cool because, like, people can, you know, you're only going to get better, like, when you are surrounded by like great players. So it's, yeah, it's cool. It's definitely hard to lose in equality, but yeah. I mean, it happens. Like, it's just a part of the process. That's so. a good mindset to have about it because I think it's on the guys' side, for example. There's a fair amount of international players starting to come in. Mm-hmm. Like Allison's coming in. Yeah. Sam Schachter played yeah. with him in Huntington. And a lot of pe- a lot of the guys were like, well, they shouldn't be allowed to play. Like, mm. they don't belong on our tour. And I'm like, just bring the best. Yeah. Like, like let I Anders mean, and Christian come in. Get the best. If we can in. get the best, like, without having to travel anywhere, like, that's, yeah. like, kind of invaluable. It's, yeah. like, pretty freaking cool. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there's there's multiple mindsets to any 
there's multiple ways to look at it, but mm. I think that's a good way to like just fire yourself yeah. up and be like, I just like, I think the product is better when you have the best players playing. Yeah. I think when you have a better product, it's just better for business. Mm-hmm. Better for business means better for the players. Yeah. And it's just a good cycle, even though it makes it make yeah. it harder for yeah. qualifier players. It does make it harder. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like a back and forth like kind of thing. It really is, but. I mean, like, playing against, like, Brandy and Mel in Miami and just, Mm -hmm. like, teams that you wouldn't see, like, unless you went to the World Tour, um, like, for me, has just been, like, really cool since I'm, like, only starting kind of, like, on that path. Um, So it's just, like, cool to, like, see kind of, like, how you can measure up against a team that's, like, coming to Miami where I live. Like, I don't know. So that's that was kind of cool. Yeah. What's really cool for the women is that (laughs) – all the best teams are here anyway. Yeah, that's you, you true. Get Kelly and Sarah, Kristen yeah. Taren, Therese mm-hmm. Sponsel. Like those are three of the top ten teams in the yeah. world. <laughs> yeah, get and them they on all the live in South Bay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's it's really cool. It's um, it's like I said. Like I just kind of look at it like if I can play against these players, like learn from them. Mm-hmm. Like that's a pretty cool spot to be in. So. Very cool spot. Yeah. And you did a little FIVB traveling last year. Yeah, you did a couple we futures. did. We did some futures. Futures are wild. Futures were very wild. You could wild. get a team from like Slovenia. Yeah. With no points. Yeah. That's gnarly. Yeah, there was a couple <laughs> Olympians in the futures we played in. Yeah. Um, there was like a um, Chinese Olympian, and then, I mean, like Danny and Tani played. Tanya played in it. Um, so we played. We played Turkey, and then we played Poland because they were kind of back to back over there. Um, that was the first time I've ever been outside the country. No. So that really? was really cool. That's for awesome. Me. Yeah, it was really, really cool. I love the sport. It's so cool. Like what other I mean, yeah. it's like it's very cool. Um so you, you get to travel the world and play the sport you love. Can't so. get that at a consulting firm. You can you can travel <laughs> the world, but in a suit, not a bathing yeah. suit. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that was really cool. That was a cool like intro to mm-hmm. um the world tour. Uh, it was, yeah, it was just cool. I mean, I had never experienced different cultures outside the U S I hadn't, you know, traveled. And so that yeah. was, that was exciting, stressful, awesome, all say, bundled into one. Yeah. So. I was going to ask how you handled it. Cause the first time I left the country was for Norseka in Martinique. Okay. And that was in, I think October of 2018. Uh huh. And I remember we had, it was like a quadruple layover. Oh. So we went from LA to, uh, florida Mm -hmm. but then it was we just like island hopped oh wow yeah we hit like three different islands before we finally hit it and so when we stopped in haiti Mm -hmm. everything was in i think french i was like guys how do we know where we're going (laughs) yeah i can't read anything yeah i was like freaking out and then we get there mostly everyone spoke english but Mm -hmm. i remember the first couple times i left the country i was like how do people know what to do (laughs) <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, that's crazy. I luckily in Turkey and Poland they spoke a lot of English actually. Okay. So we got kind of lucky with that. But we had this we had this situation where we met one of our flights we missed because of a delay. So we were stuck in the Istanbul airport. Great for airport to be stuck a in. A long time. Yeah, it's pretty sick. It's yeah. a really cool airport. Um and then the the two of the Chinese national team players were lost, but they didn't speak English so they couldn't talk to anyone and so they came up to us and they were like hey can you help us like uh, we were using google translate we weren't Mm -hmm. (laughs) we weren't exchanging words um so it was like I don't know that was like kind of cool we ended up like becoming friends with them even though we didn't speak the same language like through google translate (laughs) because they couldn't get to the they were like we're literally not going to make it to the tournament unless we just follow your every move so we're just going to come with you whatever you're doing (laughs) So I was like, okay, like let me figure out how to rebook this flight, saying, you and Katie like are currency the sweetest exchange. People in the world too. <laughs> so we like we became like a quad. Actually, they had a coach too, <laughs> but he didn't speak English either. Um, and so then we just linked up, and um, they were super sweet. They started carrying our luggage because that was like their way <laughs> of showing us off. that like they were super happy. Yeah. Um, but it was just cool. It was like if I can, I mean, it was like I've never made friends like that before, like yeah. through Google Translate. Like I don't even speak <laughs> the same language the as you, but we're airport. like we're laughing about something yeah. that we see. Like it was that was like super cool. And then we're like in a five hour Uber because we ended up not being able to like get our flight and there were like on Google Translate talking about like LA. I'm like, this is like I mean, <laughs> this is definitely never 
an experience I've never had before that yeah. ended up being super cool. So, and then we ended up like practicing with them before Poland. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was very cool. Um, it was a very cool little intro. And there, it's funny because you'll remember that for the rest of your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You never draw it up that way. No. But that's going to be a lasting, <laughs> no. impressionable memory that you'll never yeah. forget. It really, it really will be. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was cool. I'm grateful for that it like happened like that. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. And you guys did very well. You won two medals, right? We, we got second and then we lost in the round to get the third or we lost the third place match. Okay. So you got Katie was like struggling. Her groin was struggling. She had a little injury, but it was, I mean, it was like that one, the Poland one was like very strong. Both of them were super strong. Like I'm seeing like teams that were in that, that are Mm -hmm. like in elites, like elite qualities. So, um, it was cool. It was cool to, um, just play like teams from different countries like something i'd never done before that yeah um although in beach or in um college that's kind of happening now which is like pretty cool i mean you get and you mentioned danny and tani it's Mm -hmm. daniela daniela alvarez and tani Mm -hmm. moreno um they're they took a fifth yeah in paris the elite 16 yeah and they're back at tcu they're so good (laughs) you get tina became an olympian Mm -hmm. A couple months after she was at USC, like yeah, college is crazy. <laughs> yeah, she's so good. And then Mayor, I mean, half of LMU's lineup is yeah. international. Yeah, it's like the the NCAA system mm-hmm. is basically like a challenge level. It is. System. Yeah, it's really really cool because it does like prepare you to get out and play after. Yeah, like there's such like high level players. So it was funny it's when awesome. we had uh, Pavin on. She was mm-hmm. talking about how. Well, the Canadian Federation doesn't really do much in terms of developing its younger players. It's like, why would they? They got the NCAA. Yeah, they don't need to. They can just come over here. <laughs> yeah, like the McNamara's NCAA sending yeah, out the to the World Tour, Liam Munkow, Smalley uh-huh. McBain. Yeah. Like pretty much all of Canada's young developing that's talent. A good point. Sophie was at USC. Yeah. That's a really good point. They don't need to do anything. It's like same thing with USA. It's like they have their developmental program, which do you do those practices? Mm-hmm. And I was like, but the NCAA is the best thing to ever happen to USA. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's like a little feeder. Because like now you look at, I mean, Kelly Chang and Sarah Hughes were developed at USC. Mm-hmm. Kristen and Taryn, LSU. Yeah. Teresa's USC sponsors UCLA. Mm-hmm. And you go down pretty much the whole roster. Betsy was at LMU. Mm-hmm. Is Stockman the only player who didn't play indoor beach? Or played beach in college? She could be. Yeah. She did which she played at Wichita State in college. But I think she might be the last one. She might be, yeah. I think she, I think you're right. Unless April and Alex make a comeback after having their kids. Yeah, they could. <laughs> Never ruling it out. No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're beasts, so they definitely could. So you've dabbled in international. You got a taste mm-hmm. of what it's like. Mm-hmm. You've played AVP for a while. Do you have any like goals that you are pursuing with Beach, or is it just I love this lifestyle? Being as best as I can be is the best way to sustain mm-hmm. that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I feel like the ABP is so strong that like, it's a good place to start, like yeah. having goals domestically, um, cause it really is so high level. So I just want to be like the best I can be there. Um, but I think any of us would be like lying if we said that if the opportunity to like grind for the Olympics one day wasn't mm-hmm. a possibility, like we wouldn't do it. Um, so that's like definitely like like I wouldn't say loose goal but like yeah I just don't think it's realistic for me right now I'm like more focused on like growth and like mm-hmm. getting nitpicky with my game um and like really fine-tuning um a lot of things but I mean yeah that's not like out of the picture like I think that if you don't dream big then a lot of like I mean what's the point right. so I think there's definitely like valid points like both ways like i mean some people just want to play like avp or play Mm -hmm. domestically which is awesome and like that's kind of that's fine and i mean i don't really know to be honest with you i'm just kind of like going with it um and i feel like just kind of just be the best version of myself and like see where that kind of leads but and the cool thing is you don't have to know yeah you just there's so much to play here Mm -hmm. that and there's enough i mean there's 47 
FIVBs this year. Yeah. Like you can you can get your international yeah. events. And there's like nine Norsecas. I mean, Norsecas yeah. is like pumping out events right now. Yeah, there's more than usual, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah, we're actually... Well, it's just because none of them got canceled yet. I know. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> we're going to... La- Katie and I are going to Latvia, uh, Jermala. Um, I think that's right. Yeah, we're going straight from Mid, Virginia Beach. Mid-June. Okay. So that'll be like my first challenge. That's challenger. some travel for you. Yeah. Come to Virginia Beach. And then what in the world kind of flight do you have from Virginia to Latvia? It's, we actually got a really good deal. So we're like flying from Norfolk, which is like where Virginia Beach is, to mm-hmm. JFK. Okay. It was like, like a $40 flight. And oh. then we're oh, flying yeah. like from JFK. And I think the layover is in Norway, but it's like not bad. Okay, JFK to Norway's got to be relatively quick. Yeah, it's quick, and we got it was a pretty like lucky little deal. But awesome. Yeah, so I'm really excited <laughs> for that. Um, and you're and in I, the qualifier for yeah, because that's a challenge. Yeah, it's you a know challenge. Where you are right now in terms of seating? I think we're. How many total teams are there in the qualifier? Thirty-two. I think we we're like about thirty. We're probably like twenty-eight. Okay, so by the time you checked, get there, like, you'll be like twenty. Recently. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> that'd be good. The percent, that entry list on the world tour, it just it comes and goes so fast. Yeah, especially yeah, but, after like an elite sixteen, people take a look at their finishes, do the points, and then everyone drops out. Drop it. Okay, that's good to know. I'm still yeah. learning all these like tricks, but I remember like when we were going to Turkey, we were on the reserve list, mm-hmm. like. A week like we booked our flights like being on the reserve list i know like that's like a thing but i yeah. like being new to the scene i was like this feels so irresponsible yeah i mean even when you know yeah like when me and tim booked our flights just to mexico yeah when we were two on the reserve list and we had talked to three or four teams that we knew we were in okay that's good at like, least even though the flight was like 300 bucks round trip I was like, this still feels weird. It feels We're weird. You're event. like not in it. But <laughs> yeah. then you're hoping. I know. I was like talking to Brooke and Nick because I mean, they were awesome for like advice as far as like making the transition. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what do you think? Like we're third on the reserve. Like, I don't know. And yeah. they were like, definitely go. Like they'll they'll drop. And I was like, are you really? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we ended up being fine and they dropped like a cut. Like we had like a solid week where we knew like we were in, but. That was new. Still like just like dealing flight, with though. that. Like yeah. <laughs> it was weird. It was weird. Um, but yeah, so just like getting used to like all of that mm-hmm. and everything is like very new. Everything's new. So yeah. I'm just kinda like going with the flow a little bit, which is not my personality. I really like to plan. Yeah. And so it's kinda cool because I feel like the sport is like forcing me to like get out of my comfort zone a little bit. Anti planning. Oh yeah, you it's just like can't. it seems like you have to plan everything because you don't. You know, it's like not as structured as yeah. like being in an org, mm-hmm. but like you can't really yeah. <laughs> in like more than a couple months in advance. Just, at least. It's just loose plans. Yeah, you can't loose plans. hold tight on yeah, the, any loose of your plans because it changes so fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How did you handle an international qualifier? That's a in my mind, it's a different kind of stress. Yeah. Because my first international qualifier was in China in a three-star. And we okay. were like the dead last seat. So we had to play two really good teams to yeah. get in. And I was like, this is like a $1,200 trip. Yeah. And we could be out in 40 minutes. Yeah. And it was like, my heart rate was high. Oh, it's, oh my God, I'm sure. <laughs> Do you guys qualify? We did. Nice. We did. Yeah, it's definitely crazy. Like, it's just um, so unlike... It's so different than, like, other sports that, like, you could just travel, like, halfway around the world and play one game. Like, Mm -hmm. that's pretty crazy. Um, I feel like I try not, like, to take the, like, facts or pressure, like, out of the situation that I'm in. Like, once I step on the court especially. And even, like, in traveling there, just, like, keeping, like, a a very, like, loose, like, grateful mindset is, like, something – I try to do like in any qualifier, like mm. even like the Huntington qual, like that any qualifier is gnarly, but like it's like that kind of for everyone. So like just having the right mindset going into it and not like, like, yes, there's facts. Like, yes, I spent money to come here, but like all that matters now is like the moment and like the ball and like things I can control because ultimately like if I want to do well, like then that's. And, like, this is so cool. Like, I'm in this yeah. country playing, like, against this team that's, you know, trains a different way mm-hmm. and, like, lives a different lifestyle. Like, 
there's so much I can learn from like this moment. So just like compartmentalizing, like, okay, like that, this is what's happening. And I think like, I didn't think about how hard that was going to be. And I just kind of did it. But like, I mean, looking back and just like, even still looking at qualifiers, like to this day, it is, it's gnarly. Yeah. Like it's a gnarly system. It really is. Anyone who travels to futures, I'm like, I'm your biggest fan. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's no chance you're making that money back. No, you're not. You're just going. <laughs> you just need points. <laughs> you, just yeah. for points. Yeah. You can't take those points to the bank. Uh-huh. Yeah, no. <laughs> I didn't. That's. I also didn't really realize the money situation until we kind of placed. And I was like, oh, $300. <laughs> wow. Okay. It's so tough. Awesome. Yeah. So I don't know. Unless I have to, I don't know how many futures I'll have. I'll I think, be doing. I Katie. don't think with how many events Norsake is putting on, I don't think yeah. Americans should ever play futures. Yeah. It was a bit rough. I mean, luckily, we got pretty good. I mean, Europe wasn't bad, like, as far as, like, the prices and just, like, doing two trips in a row. We got, yeah. like, pretty good situation. But, it, yeah, I didn't realize that yeah. you would make $500 for getting then, second well, place. Well, because Norsake is if you're the best finishing American team, you also get a stipend from USA. Yeah, that's super cool. And you can actually come out making money from Norsake. Mm -hmm. there, but there's with futures, there's just no chance because yeah. there's no stipend. Yeah. And so when when – guys are like do you want to go play this future so i'm like no no yeah <laughs> I, I can't say i can't say i'll be doing it and it stinks though because a lot of them are in like really cool places yeah. and it's like if that was a challenger like or i don't know you know but yeah i learned that Which, for sure cool vacation spots mm -hmm. so i was looking at it i was like i could do the futures in tahiti oh, i could yeah. make that happen oh yeah <laughs> like they're all such cool locations i, I swear know. Like, I, yeah, I mean, someone was like, oh, you want to go to, like, New Zealand and play this? I'm like, yeah, I do, but I also, like, can't probably afford that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's cool. I mean, yeah, it's definitely, like, a learning curve with all of that, but I'm grateful that we did that. Yeah. It was super cool. And I got some points. I say you learned very fast, or at least <laughs> it, it looks like you did, because you got your points. You're in Challengers, yeah. which is exactly where you need to be. You're yeah. playing great on the AVP. Thanks. Yeah, you figured out the system. You worked into it. Slowly but surely. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's cool. It's been cool because, you know, you don't really know what it's going to be like after college and it can feel like, oh, like what's next? But it's been really cool to see like how I can because I'm just like all about like how can I be better every day? Like I'm never like satisfied. And mm -hmm. so like the ways that you can like still get better after college because college is so great. And you're like, I have these great coaches like this might be all I have, yeah. but like to then graduate and work with even more great coaches and like just continue to learn has been so cool. Yeah. Um, so I'm just like really embracing that right now and just kind of tries running joke is that in every other sport you go from college to the pros and then you get the resources, like the mm. top flight resources mm -hmm. in beach, you go college to pro and you have the top flight resources and yeah. then you have nothing <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah oh my gosh fsu had some crazy facilities that was awesome football to be a part of are, i know different. pep just needs a football team yeah love them but we probably do to help us out <laughs> yeah. and that's what when um delaney's sister did one of her graduate seasons at byu mm -hmm. so she went from saint mary's no football team really yeah. small school to byu mm -hmm. she was like these facilities are insane. Yeah, it's shocking. Yeah. I was shocked. I was like, what do you mean we have a hot tub, cold tub, whirlpool? What do you mean by that? Like, what? <laughs> I mean, we have a doctor on st like here right now? Like, what do you mean? I don't have to go to Santa Monica? <laughs> so that was, it was crazy. It was crazy. But I mean, you get the like, I don't know. There's something cool too about like the small environment mm -hmm. and like you just get it. So, I mean, I'm super glad I had both. It was like, yeah. they're awesome in both ways. Yeah. So. And then it's cool that USA does have its developmental program yeah. now for the athletes who are coming out of college because mm -hmm. I do think it makes that transition a lot easier, especially yeah. and really especially for the guys mm -hmm. who don't have NCAA don't have Beach and yeah. they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really you cool. Can tell. Yeah, no, I know. That's, I mean, I still can't believe they don't have guys beach volleyball. Isn't there one school that has it? So D2s and NAIA can have it, but mm -hmm. D1, they're beholden to Title IX. Okay. Weber in Florida. Yeah, right? They have one? LT is the new head coach there. Okay. Um, they have a beach, a boys beach program. Yeah. And I think there's some NAIAs, but I don't know how it works really. Gotcha. Yeah. I'll be, I'm excited for that to happen, hopefully. Me too. 
Like, it's so cool. And there's so many good, like, guys players. So yeah. I hope it happens. It'd be cool if more – I'd be more excited, actually, if more NCAA schools adopt men's indoor. Mm-hmm. Because when good I point. watch men's indoor, like, Hawaii, Long Beach. Yeah. Hawaii, UCLA. Like, this is gnarly. It's gnarly. It's so fun <laughs> to watch. That so was, like, good. my favorite, favorite sport to watch, like, at Pepperdine. I was just like, they jump so high. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's so high level. It's so entertaining. Yeah. Like so many digs. Like with that veloc at that velocity is like fun to watch. Yeah. So they definitely that'd be that'd be awesome if they can expand that. For I sure. did. Uh, I commentated. So I've never played indoor, but I commentated mm-hmm. oh, the Italian league this okay. off season. Yeah. And um, anytime someone digs a ball, I'm like that's a gift from God. That ball's coming <laughs> in so fast. Yeah. How a libero does what they do yeah it blows my mind it's so impressive like how can you make that decision that yeah. quickly that you know it's going to go there like it's i feel like it's almost like instant you have to have some sort of instinct like yeah. it's crazy with that how hard they're hitting it's crazy and that's why i love uh have you met joe and gage worsley micah ma no i haven't so they run they all play uh indoor overseas mm-hmm. micah's in turkey joe and gage i think are i want to say in germany okay um but they run this kind of a podcast just more of like a volleyball content youtube channel mm-hmm. called out of system okay and they have yeah, great videographers and they'll yeah. have like really high depth views from the end line of, mm-hmm. of gauge he's a libero passing these like hooking spin surf oh, and just diming them like this is wow. that's insane man. that's insane yeah no all, the serving is very fun to watch too it's yeah it's pretty cool yeah i mean that's awesome i like beach so i'm like indoor scares me now yeah I there's just so many jumps. people yeah. i'm like okay who am i gonna step on who am i gonna get concussed <laughs> right. with right now because yeah. in beach i'm just like diving all over the place at yeah. this point and i haven't played in so long like indoor that i'd probably be like concussed right away <laughs> I if i tried to do that yeah. <laughs> do you and katie do you split or she run out we split yeah okay. mm-hmm. i'm like still i'm still learning the block yeah because i didn't train it at pepperdine like i didn't you, train you full time i was full-time four, defense okay. So I'm definitely learning. Like I trained it. I, I split block with Maddie Anderson last year. Okay. But in big games, she would run up more and yeah. then I would full time. So, I'm, but Brooke, um, Brooke and Nick were great. Just like reintroducing me to blocking. Cause I hadn't done it in like four years. Yeah. Um, if you even count juniors blocking, I mean, you're not really <laughs> even blocking half the time. You're just pulling. Um, you worked yeah. on great pulling. As yeah, junior. exactly. <laughs> so really just serve. So I don't have to run up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's been um, really like a big part of my game that I'm kind of working on. And blocking's really hard, so yeah. um, obviously always like working on defense too. But that's been really cool because Katie and I split, um, so just like training the block a lot for sure because yeah. it's very difficult. So yeah, Who, what coaches are you working with out here? Jose okay. mainly. Yeah, he's Jose a great Fiapo. blocking coach. Yeah, he's great. So just like soaking that up because yeah. um there's just so much to it there's so many little steps so many little adjustments i can tell i like i'm gonna like love it and i'm i grasp it like here and there mm-hmm. um just like the level of detail that you have to have to like make those moves and but i'm i'm like slowly learning like i feel like on defense i have experience to where like i can make instinct- instinctual reads but like mm. sometimes on the block i can see that like yeah i need more time to like be able to make that like ex- instinctual read so just like training that a lot honestly but i feel like in the past year i've gotten a little bit better so yeah slow, I mean, new, skills, slow build. new skills are as frustrating as it is it's so yeah. fun to learn something fun. new too yeah because mm-hmm. i've been split blocking a lot more and whenever i even get a touch on defense yeah i'm just like i did it <laughs> I touched yeah, that high line that was 50 feet high. It's so cool. <laughs> it's like, it's really fun because I feel like in beach, like each, each, like each side, like right side, left side, like block D, like they're all like so different. Mm-hmm. So I feel like you're just like, especially as a split or like I kind of play both sides. Like I yeah. played right at, pe- or at Pep and FSU and I'm playing left now with Katie, which has okay. been like a huge learning curve. Like just the angles of approach, like everything is so different when you really break it down like i I found myself like wanting to kick in all the time and i'm like no this is such a right side yeah feeling but it's been really cool because then i feel like in transition i'm like oh okay like i've played both Mm -hmm. so i just think that's kind of cool about like beach is like the block the d both sides Mm -hmm. like there's so much um 
to learn and yeah. do always like yeah. you can never like i i feel like the basics never really go away like you there's always more to learn so that's yeah. kind of cool about it i think switching sides is so hard it's really hard as a lefty <laughs> i'm never on the left yeah anytime i'm stuck over there i'm like ah, i don't know yeah <laughs> yeah it's, all the angles they're so are different. so different and the footwork and i like whenever i'm setting because i was training with uh, evan Corey this week because mm-hmm. him and troy are playing together now but troy is okay. in ostrava right and so evan asked if i could fill in so mm-hmm. we were just like splitting time on the right and the left and yeah. every time i was on the left I was like, my setting is like right foot, no left, left foot forward. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's so different. It is like, and yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been cool to like just work with like the coaches that we're working with right now and Jose, like he's like big on the details. And mm-hmm. so I'm like constantly humbled. Like I'm like, yep, that's wrong. Or like I'm on both <laughs> knees when I'm passing right now. Like this is, so it's kind of cool. We're, we're kind of like playing around with like maybe me going back to the right right now, yeah. but um i like both like it's just been really cool to be able to like learn both Mm -hmm. and i think it's like valuable to be able to play both so i'm just trying to work on kind of like being good at both and just like because i feel like if you can play both like in transition it just makes it a lot easier like if you're comfortable everywhere then you're yeah so it's like less foreign you know if i end up on the right or the left during a play so yeah it's been cool yeah what do you see yourself long-term playing where in Is terms that? of you just seem like such a natural defender every time i watched you at pep <laughs> i was so impressed every oh, time thank you i don't know i it's a good question i feel like i can't really tell as far as like time will tell kind yeah. of like with what happens but i don't know i mean i'd have to make a lot of i mean i think i could be a full-time blog i'm like a little undersized maybe i'm like Hopefully. six foot Okay. I don't it's know crazy if that's, that's undersized. undersized now. Is I it? Think it's I don't... probably. <laughs> it's probably a hair above average, I think. Oh, okay. Um, but the game's getting huge. Yeah. When you look at all the top blockers in the world. It's like Katya Stam six four, mm. Pavin six four, Kelly Chang six three. Yeah. Kleiman was six five. Yeah. <laughs> but there, there is a lot of really great blockers that just have great hands. Yeah. Like I'm thinking of like Diana. Like she's such a good blocker. Mm-hmm. She just like makes like really good instinctual reads. And Brandy's only five ten, but she and Brandy's she 5'10". plays about yeah. six seven. She so. is. Oh yeah, crazy <laughs> playing against Brandy. Humbling experience. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I have a, so- a soft spot for defense. Like mm-hmm. I really do. I just, I love it. There's something about, like, being in the back and, like, watching the game, like, unfold before you. It's almost like you're playing, like, a board, not a board game. I'm trying to think of, like, the right word for it. But it's, like, kind of, like, harmonious. Yeah. Just, like, being back there. Um, it's, like, a different vibe than being at the net. Um, I don't know if that's because, like, I've played it more. But, I mean, splitting's super fun, too. I know there's, like, less of a market for splitting. But um, I don't know. I, I do think, think it's getting bigger though. It, it might be, yeah. I think it might be. Um, so I look at it like, oh, if I can do both, then just like, you know, like if that, like, just like keep working on both, then that's mm-hmm. awesome. If I can, for me, like, just maintain the same level of detail when like working on both of them, because obviously that's a lot. Like, both skills are very like you need to like really focus in when training them. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I have a soft spot for defense. Maybe it's because I need to keep working on blocking, <laughs> but yeah, no, I I love I I love both, and and splitting's fun because it's like almost like a dance, like when you're splitting, kind yeah. of in a way where like you can kind of keep the other team like a little bit more like what's going on type yeah. of thing, um, like who's going to the net, like who's back there type of yeah. thing. It's like less straightforward, so I kind of like that about it, um, and we both, I mean if we feel like one of us is like more on with the block or the D usually Katie's more on with the block, (laughs) then um, like I'll like stay back. So we do have the freedom to do that, which is cool. Just kind of like what me and Maddie did. Yeah. But um, I think with time, like now that we can actually train both skills, um, we'll just be able to like fine tune them more. And I think splits awesome. Like so so much less tiring. It is less tiring. I think splitting (laughs) helps your offense a lot. Yeah. Especially saving. Well, you've probably never, been like a full-time blocker but jump serving running up and yeah. getting served and he like virginia beats last year yeah by the our semifinals is like i don't have a whole lot left 
And, and fortunately for me, Jam was like, I have nothing left. So we were <laughs> oh like, my gosh. all right, let's not waste anyone's time. Jam had a yeah. flight in like an hour. I'm yeah. Like, all right, well, let's go catch your flight and let's just forfeit. No way. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's crap legit. In. I was on the verge and I was like, all right, I can't. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I am like people who know me know. I mean, actually, I feel like a lot of people at Pepperdine didn't really know this fully besides like my trainer, but I am like really bad cramper. Like really? I have hereditary problems. Like both really? my parents are really bad crampers and I sweat like gallons every single time I'm, I'm on you. the court. Yeah. So, um that's definitely like a big thing for me in Florida. It was like very prominent because it's just so humid there yeah. that it's like two times the amount. Yeah. But I actually did. I've run up a couple times I ran up like a couple times with Kim Hildreth and Aurora like just playing tournaments yeah. and it's so hard and I like to top spin so it's yeah. like it's fully like it's a full body exercise I mean mm-hmm. you're just draining yourself but I did it kind of for blocking reps and then obviously two amazing people and defenders to play with um but then just to get myself in shape too yeah. kind of like doing interval sprints i literally was like this will be good a good way to get in shape <laughs> yeah. like by running up yeah. and so mad respect for people that do that um but i i, I liked it i liked the challenge so i'm very open-minded about the sport i like all aspects of it mm-hmm. and if like I end up running up one day. That'll be cool. Yeah. I'll have to get a lot better, but <laughs> I am all for it. And I really like pulling because it feels like defense to me, like yeah. a hands up D. So the toughest is when yeah. you jump serve, run up, then pull, then yeah. get a dig, then transition, and then you have to <laughs> jump serve and run up again. Oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you do it all in one play, is always very <laughs> draining. I remember in New Orleans we were playing uh, Tim and Kyle. It was mm-hmm. our second match of the day. Oh wow! And I think we earned five or six straight mm-hmm. when I was jump serving and running up. Nice. And I almost missed one on purpose. It was like, <laughs> I have no gas left. You're like, if I miss this, it will benefit us in this game. If, <laughs> yeah. I, just, if I just hit the banner with this yeah. serve. I was like, <laughs> I need to miss this, and then you need to serve Avery. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's too good. Yeah, it's a workout. It's, it's a for sure workout. So you have hereditary cramping stuff? Yes. My parents are both really bad crampers. Like, they'll, my dad, like, works out in the sun all day. And, like, if he doesn't drink electrolytes, he's, like, coming home, like, cramping all over his legs, all over his arms. Like, waking up in the middle of the night, cramping in his feet. Like, same thing with my mom. Like, she's had to, like, pull over off the side of the road because she can't drive because, like, both her legs are cramping. And so I actually had, like, it's been, like, as I started playing beach, like, beach was, like, the only really sport I noticed it in because it's, like, so you're just... You're sweating so um, You're much straining. More. You're yeah. in the sun the entire day. Like, yeah. at, like, you know, like, a dig the beach or a tournament where you're, like, out in the sun all the whole day. So I played... I forget who I was playing with. It was dig the beach in Fort Lauderdale. Maybe, like, my sophomore year of college, like, over the summer. Full body cramped. Literally couldn't get off the ground. Like, it was it was so bad. And I had, I, I drank, like, electrolytes. Like, I... I mean, I ate, like, it was, like, crazy, and I think I've gotten better at managing it, like, as far as, like, on the nutritional side, Mm -hmm. like, definitely, like, fueling. What works for you? Because I feel like (sighs) everyone is different. Yeah, it's crazy. That's the crazy part about it is, like, everyone's different, too. Like, there's no, like, one formula for everyone, but I ended up getting a sweat. So I've tried so many things. Like, I've tried, like, pretty much, like, every electrolyte that Mm -hmm. you've found or whatever, but I ended up getting a sweat test because I found this like this company in Florida that did them. And it was when Katie and I were in Flo- – we were like based out of Tallahassee last summer and we were going to Orlando for mm-hmm. like a flight because you can't fly out of Tallahassee anywhere. Yeah. Um, but they had their like company set up out of their house and it was basically just like a machine that activates your sweat glands and their like philosophies that like – which is true, the biggest electrolyte that you lose in your sweat is salt. Um, And so basically the machine will like activate your sweat glands and then tell you like where you lie on a spectrum Mm. of like how much salt you're losing. I forget um, like if it's like per hour, like every so often, but basically I didn't know this, but you can lose between like depending on the individual like I think it was like a scale of like 200 milligrams to like 1800 milligrams of salt in the same period of time, like depending okay. on the person, um, which big, I thought was crazy. It's a big spectrum. That's crazy. Like yeah. how different like people can be like 
someone can probably roll up to a tournament having drank in like one water yeah and like not really cramp but like if i did that like i'd be in the hospital like it's yeah. crazy um and so i was on the high end of like the salt spectrum mm -hmm. so i need to replace like it's like over a thousand i think it was about 1300 milligrams of salt that i lose in like the duration that they had okay. um so it's salt is really big for me so i'll yeah. like preload with salt before tournaments and then man maintain that like i don't drink pure water like at a tournament like it, there's something in it whether it's liquid iv or like yeah. a salt based like element is you, great you can go like too far you can go too far spectrum, though right because yeah. then the salt it just like like right. takes up all your water yes yeah, so you don't want to overdo nothing. it yeah. that's a thing um but yeah good balance and then like food is a really big part of it too like so like making it making sure i eat like before or after right away yeah. um like if i don't eat right after i play like before the next game like that's that's just, i'm gonna cramp like 100 percent. yeah um and so fuel is like really big and then actually as a last ditch resort um hot shots if you've ever heard of them no are awesome there there's it's this little concoction it looks like fireball okay and it's it's kind of tastes like fireball to be honest with you so prepare your stomach while you're playing <laughs> if you're gonna yeah. take one but it's there's nothing in it really it's um it's like lime juice and a couple other like random spices okay. and it's there's something about the formula that um like it like communicates with your muscular like contractions and is able to like prevent cramping um wow. like it it's marketed that it like helps prevent cramping yeah. and so um i started trying that out and it works really well like it, especially like if you're like feeling the onset signs of cramping yeah. um take a hot shot and you're good for the match which is crazy because nothing else has worked for me like that like if i start cramping i'm like oh, i'm done yeah like it's too late where do yours start um <laughs> usually like my calves are like the arches of my feet yeah yeah it's so yeah. i think it's so funny so i used to be a chronic cramper really when i lived in florida yeah but when Florida's, i so i was yeah. built much different I, when i moved to florida i was like 225 like really? i was built like a middle linebacker oh wow and I so i would sweat so much and i really? still sweat a ton yeah. but i would um drink so much water thinking that would do it mm -hmm. but it just drained my electrolytes yeah and so i would just cramp every single tournament i played in florida mm -hmm. i cramped yeah it's an early and then the heat but once too. i came out here i figured out that drinking water you can you should only drink water during the match yeah and then between matches it's you gotta have like some like i hate gatorade because it's just sugar but like yeah. element athletic like athletic greens yeah emergency mm -hmm. big emergency yeah yeah like one of those and what, what's worked for me is i just snack on fruit and like salted almonds all oh, day that's good yeah so at the cbva the other day we played eight total matches oh wow and i went through an entire bag of almonds really like 13 servings of almonds <laughs> and an entire bag of mangoes and like four bananas that's awesome <laughs> and that's all i ate because i can't eat a big meal yeah especially at a cbva where you play a match you It'll rest for tough. 30 minutes and then you yeah. play again i can't yeah. have like a six inch sub just yeah sitting like no a rock you can't in my stomach. <laughs> and so i just like cruise on nuts and dried fruit all day and that's, that's awesome. been that's what's worked for me I wish I could do that because I, I don't prefer eating like sandwiches either yeah. or like something like, you know, like more dense like that. Mm -hmm. But I, when I used to just eat like fruit and nuts, like it wasn't enough. Really? Oh, RX so bars are a big one for me too. Oh yeah, RX it, bars are it's great. It's like a lot of sugar, but it's good. Mm -hmm. It's sugar from dates, so it's not mm -hmm. fake it's like more garbage. Right, yeah. yeah. And then mm -hmm. you get, it's decent protein. Yeah. I like RX so bars. RX bars are big for me. almonds mangoes yeah i love that the rotation yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's all yeah the cbvas are gnarly with that I forgot, I forgot about you, that you get a lot of reps yeah a lot of warm-ups <laughs> warm -ups. yeah by the end by the finals i was like all right let's hit one ball i'm good, <laughs> <laughs> good. let's go let's i'll just, get warm in the game let's just get going yeah set to 28 awesome. the first 14 points let's just warm up into it yeah <laughs> that's, that's too good oh my gosh so you have your mala coming up. Is that your next one? Or is Virginia before? Virginia Beach, Virginia Beach. is next week. Okay. And then it's right after. Mm -hmm. I keep forgetting Virginia's next week. I know, it's sneaking up. Yeah. It's when crazy. do you when do you leave? We leave next stay Thursday, like a week from Thursday. So okay. from today. So like next Thursday. Perfect. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then your mala. You get it's it gets busy. Once Virginia starts, yeah. it's busy from there. I know. I was like trying to look at the calendar, plan a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
Um, because my boyfriend is in the minors for the Orioles. Oh, awesome. so he. I like uh, him even more. Big Orioles. <laughs> oh yeah, fan. you're from Maryland. From Maryland. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, you should go. Is to he on the Frederick Keys? He's on the Bowie Bay Bowie Bay Sox? Yeah, the Bowie Bay Awesome. I always say Bowie. It's Bowie, isn't it? Bowie, yeah. It's Bowie. Um, but anyway, he doesn't have off days, as you probably okay. know. So I, with like beach, it's kind of nice because you can kind of sneak some off days yeah. in there to, to go. So yeah. So to make us work, I basically like have to go there, which I love. I love like watching and mm-hmm. like supporting. Um, but I was trying to look kind of at the calendar and I was like, wow, it's about to get very busy for yeah. us. Um, let's see if I can like sneak in a couple of days here and there to go yeah. see him. But yeah, it's cool. He's, he's, um, do the Bay Sox travel at all? They travel. I don't know how minor leagues work. It's, really. um, it's pretty gnarly. So they only bus, but they do travel. Like I just visited him in Akron, Ohio, but they bus okay. there. Um, I think in AAA they fly, I heard okay. recently, but it's, it's pretty rough. They only have Mondays off. And they can't really go anywhere because it's like they'll get home like late Sunday night and then they have stuff like Tuesday morning. Yeah. But he loves it. I mean, it's yeah. it's pretty cool. That's good because yeah. I, I think that minor league baseball and professional beach volleyball are very similar in terms yeah. of like the grinding lifestyle. Cause it's true. Zana's yeah. brother, uh, I think he's done playing minor leagues now, but he mm-hmm. was playing for Birmingham something. Okay. In the minors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so – when we had me and Zana always talk about mm-hmm. what do you think is is better or worse minor league baseball oh, or beach volleyball? That's a hot take because it's the carrot <laughs> is bigger in baseball, obviously. Yeah, I mean you can get Mike Trout signed like a four hundred million dollar contract. Yeah, it's crazy. But the the barrier to entry is way higher. It's way higher versus beach volleyball. It's not as big of a carrot, but yeah. you can work your way up pretty fast. Yeah. Oh, that's that's funny. That's interesting. It's it's cool. I mean. We for sure are both just like grinding right now. So yeah. it's kind of cool in a lot of ways because mm-hmm. we can just like support each other because um, we're both just like going for it. And so you get it's it. pretty you fun. Get it. Like we both really get yeah. it, like, which is nice. Um, just through the ups and downs, like we're able to like support each other really well. Biggest sacrifice is like the time that we don't get together, yeah. which is really hard. Um, like we've been dating for like six years at this point. Yeah. Um, so that's been really hard, but I mean, we've found ways to just make it work and it's Mm -hmm. really, it's really cool to just like see him, um, grinding like in his avenue and his sport. And it's almost like inspirational to like come back after going and visiting him, see him like pitch so well and, you know, grind through this like really tough system that Mm -hmm. they have. And then to come back and just like find motivation through that is like pretty cool like yeah. it's cool to see so it'd be really fun if, if at some point i'm sure the schedules would not make this happen <laughs> but if you you guys could come up to our house for a little maryland crab feast yeah that'd be so fun it's that'd crab be awesome. season right now is it really yeah you gotta you gotta tell that. easton get some crabs this summer yeah if, I have if he to. hasn't gotten on it he's not a big seafood he's kind of picky but i feel like he has to try it yeah he's gotta it's crabs are weird it's more of a it's more of like a social thing Okay. Crab feast, because <laughs> okay, you, like you'll have like burgers and chicken and hot yeah. dogs with it, because you'll pick a crab and you'll get like this much meat. Okay. <laughs> so. Wow, I've never been to one of these. I gotta come over. Yeah, he. Um, I was looking because like Virginia Beach, we fly in Norfolk, and the AAA team is Norfolk, and it's like twenty minutes away from the courts. Yeah. But he's not in AAA, but he's doing super well. Yeah. So I'm like, anyone want to move him yeah. up next week? <laughs> yeah. But they're promo. away anyway, so yeah. it couldn't have worked out that well, of course. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's funny. That's where their AAA team is. So I was kind of like, well, let's, let's, let's see yeah. here. Because whenever I fly, whenever I play Virginia, I always just fly into Baltimore. Okay. And then spend a day or two with the family. Oh, that's drive smart. Down. It's yeah. close by. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm excited. to. I like Bowie. Um, wait, is it Bowie or Bowie? Bowie. <laughs> I like Bowie and like the surrounding areas. Like what's near there? Like Harvard de Grace? Am I butchering DC's that DC's pretty close. DC's close. I usually, mm-hmm. I fly into DC. So we've gone, visited DC. Um, and then Montgomery County's pretty beautiful as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like Chesapeake Bay is yeah. like awesome. So it's kind of cool. I got to, mm-hmm. we get to explore like different places kind of yeah. throughout 
our journeys Mm -hmm. and that's one of the places that i've kind of i I don't know if i ever would have gone there like if not for that so it's kind of cool promise you you wouldn't have (laughs) (laughs) but it's beautiful like it really is so maryland has some hidden gems yeah it does anything by the chesapeake like annapolis i don't know if you've gotten down there yeah annapolis Annapolis is beautiful Mm -hmm. we went to annapolis um for his birthday one time so that was yeah it's just it's cool to kind of explore that area it's fun that you guys are both like even though it's different sports, d- completely different parts of the country that yeah. you have a lot of empathy for what the other is doing. Yeah. I mean, I know it's tough and um, we're definitely like both not swimming in money right now, but it's like, it's just not what it's about for us like yeah. right now and like kind of ever, like we're not really like, that's not kind of like our our goal, but he he did say if he makes it to the majors that he'll sponsor me. So my biggest sponsor <laughs> will be Easton. But no, come on, Easton. <laughs> um, we're betting on you. But yeah, no, it's been cool. Um, because yeah, there's definitely like a lot that you can learn, take away, and just like gain like from like both mm-hmm. kind of experiences. And um, he like just like seeing both like highs and lows on both sports is like pretty cool and like that's what makes it worth it so yeah. like just seeing him like like he hit he hit like 98 on like the radar gun like last time i was there and i was like wow like that's he he was pit- he was throwing 88 in college like it's crazy to, to see like 10 to add significant. 10 i mean like his dedication is like pretty inspiring so and it's not easy i mean he's been i mean he graduated he's like two years older than me so he's been okay. like grinding for a while but um yeah, it's been pretty cool to see. Just yeah. like inspiring for sure. So he's well, cool. Until he makes it to the majors. Who's yeah. sponsoring you right now? <laughs> <laughs> I am open for open for biz. I don't really know how that works, but that's definitely like a new kind of thing too. Um I I'm I work with like Zankai Sports, just like endorsing some mm-hmm. of their products. Um and then like the right stuff sends me some packets, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, um, I definitely just am, I feel like I'm still kind of like entering the scene yeah. and just like learning about how all that works. So I don't really know how it works, but I'm open for business. <laughs> there we go. And where can people find you if they want to sponsor you or just follow your journey? Um, I guess Instagram is the only social media I have. Okay. What's your handle? It's just my name, but one extra R on the end. So no E. Brooke Bauer. No E. <laughs> no E on the Brooke. It trips me up sometimes. I know. It's very different. I haven't met another Brooke without an E. I'm surprised <laughs> you, I haven't. You're the but... first. Have you talked to your parents why they left off the E? No. I think they just, they haven't really told me, no. Yeah. I think they just, I don't know if they, they were going for like the stream vibe. That's what I was thinking. Maybe. But I think at the time, like Brooke wasn't a super common name. And yeah. so they just liked it. But then it ends up like there's a lot of Brooks now, so I guess that was not the best prediction. But we're they were Brooke and Blake, so we're both B and B. Okay. But I don't know if they had a philosophy with the E or not. But okay. I'll take it. It's different. It is different. A little different. But yeah. <laughs> we when me and Delaney, we went to take Austin into the doctor for whatever checkup. You lose track. Yeah. And the kids have I'm to sure. get checked up all the time. And the lady asked what his name was. I was like Austin. She goes. Thank God, a normal name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people are switching it up lately. Yeah, people are getting real creative with names. <laughs> they are. So many people are having babies right now, too, I feel like. So we went just Austin, I very love normal it. spelling. And I like the meaning. Yeah, it's cool to have, it's cool to like say his name and it have a story behind it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, because we, that's the only boy's name that we liked. We really? had like 20 girls' names. We're like, this is sweet, this is awesome, that's great. <laughs> of and the boys were like, Austin's it. Yeah. It's that or nothing. <laughs> That's kind of cool that you knew, though. Like, you weren't, like, going through a list. Like, I don't yeah. know about this one. Yeah. I was That's laughing awesome. with Climbing about that because she's having a boy. Yeah. She's like, are you guys having the hardest time picking out names? I said, yes. It seems so hard. Like, it's such a permanent thing. I know. Like, it's, that's like that. It's like a high-pressure moment. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're giving that kid his name for the next 80-ish years. Yeah, like, what if they don't look like an Austin? <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, that's, that's a good name. I like that name. <laughs> yeah. We got to have you meet him soon. I know. I met him briefly. Okay. And we were walking past each other at the CBVA, but I haven't, I haven't met, met him. Okay. I haven't hung out with him yet. Yeah. He is getting huge. Really? Yeah. He gained a pound and a half in a week. Oh, wow. It's ridiculous. Oh, wow. He's <laughs> ready for the gym. He's ready for the gym. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready for the courts. Oh, my gosh. Well, Brookie. 
glad to have you on. Thanks so much. Always fun catching up and chatting with you. Good luck this season and safe travels to Latvia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hopefully, I'll be commentating as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, awesome. That'd be great. It's always fun commentating American matches. I'm like, yeah, I'm I can sure. tell you guys a lot about this team. Yeah, you've got the edge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, awesome hanging. Uh, this will be out in a couple weeks. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Shoots. We did it.